Hello and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli. In today's video, we're gonna go over the all new 2021 Airstream Classic 30RB. The Airstream Classic is our top of the line, top model Airstream. And it's available in two floor plans. There's a 30RB, it comes in queen or twin, and there's a 33 front bedroom twin or queen. The one we're gonna feature today is the rear bedroom queen, and the MSRP is $158,800. The available options are the interior decors. The interior decor we're gonna feature today is the Comfort White, that'll be a white cabinet, and it has a cafe latte seating. It's also available in the Earl Gray, that'll be gray ultra leather seating. Another available interior decor is the Mocha Cherry. Mocha Cherry will have either macadamia, that's a light tan, or chestnut, a dark brown cushion. And the third available interior decor is kind of maple, which comes in either macadamia or chestnut seating. Let's head inside, we'll check out the floor plan. What I love about this floor plan is how open it is in the front. You have a front sofa area that has power foot pedestals, reading lights above, large roof lockers, there's a good amount of space here, so if you have pets, they'll have area to lay down, or if you have kids, there is an area for them to play. There's a center dinette that folds into a bed, and a center galley. A galley comes with a convection microwave and gas oven with three burner cooktop. You do have an option to delete the gas oven, have drawers in its place. Very large stainless steel deep sink, solid surface countertops. And this trailer is a smart trailer, so it's connected with an AT&T internet plan, which will give you Wi-Fi, and then all the controls for the systems you could do through your cell phone. In the middle, we have a large nine cubic foot automatic two-way gas electric refrigerator, a center wardrobe, a slide out pantry here, and this is a split bath with privacy curtain in the middle shower on one side of the hallway toilet on the other side and then a rear queen bed so this bed is powered and it folds up to give you more room to walk around it during the day and it lifts up and it gains you access to a lot of storage underneath you can see here the slats which gives you some inner spring and allows your air or your mattress to breathe. You could also reach into the trunk from here and grab some additional items. Above the bed, there's controls here for lighting, and then you have large overhead roof lockers in the bedroom as well. Beautiful panoramic window across the back, large windows here that open all the way out. And there's three different height adjustments too for the window. A high, medium, and a low. One of the biggest things that separates the Classic from the Globetrotter International Flying Cloud will be the hydronic heating system. So there's a glycol line that surrounds the whole entire trailer with little radiators. And the radiant heat comes off of these and it keeps the walls warm. So there's no blower, so there's no forced hot air, there's no extra noise. You just have a little circulator pump that pumps the glycol all the way around. You set your temperature. And it really helps if you're gonna do some cold weather camping. Um, if you look behind the bed, they even leave a gap on the wall to allow the radiant heat to come up uh, behind the bed. They even run the line in the bottom of the shower to give you a heated shower floor. And in the bathroom, there's a heated towel bar. Above the towel bar in the bathroom, there's some storage here. There's a window in the bathroom with a shade. GFCI protected electrical outlet. The ceiling light controls are all in here. So you can turn it on and off. A little clothes hamper. Porcelain toilet is the medic. Stick with your foot on it, that will flush the bowl. Toilet paper goes here. Large sink, this is a really nice sink. I like the depth of it and I like the size of it. Storage here below the sink. 
And then there's adjustable shelves that uh, you could put other items in here. A large mirror on the wall, and there's some hooks on the walls back here for uh, to hang some clothes. Big mirror on the back of the shower door. The flooring, it's woven vinyl flooring on top of composite flooring. So that's a new feature for 2021 is the composite floor. There's one piece of the composite floor for the whole entire trailer. So it's no longer tongue and groove with multiple eight by four sheets. Uh, it gives you one continuous flow. So uh, you don't have to worry about uh, floor creaks. The curtain boxes is all wrapped in the magic suede here and it buffers from uh, the wall that ha allows you to have your day night shades built in and it really closes it out doesn't allow light to come through this window we opened before happens to be your emergency exit window so you just pull the red handles twist and lift and you can pull the screen out to get out in emergency there's a drawer on either side of the bed and there is a cabinet on either side of the bed. Solid surface countertop material here, USB charge ports, and an electrical outlet next to each one of the beds. On the side of the beds, there is a drawer on either side. At the foot of the bed, there's a drawer. And this has a premium pillow top mattress here. And the bed, you can control the angle here with the control here on the wall. And you can lay it down flat. This is 60 by 75. If you got the twin bed option, the twin beds are 34 by 80. And then the mattress will slide over against the wall here. And when you get the twin bed model, there'll be a shirt locker here. There'll be a cabinet up top here on either side and it'll have one large nightstand in the middle. Uh, so a lot of people, um, I'd say about 50-50 split, twin versus queen. So you have to make the decision on which one is more conducive for your lifestyle. I can say you do get more storage if you get the twin bed option. But this side of the bed has a matching USB and electrical outlet and the drawer and the cabinet. Over here, we have a television. It's an LD TV that has an articulating arm so you can adjust the angle of the TV as a lock mechanism to keep it in place when you're towing. You have another bed control here on the wall. You have sleep mode. When you press this, it will dim the lights down for you. Shut them off so you can go to sleep. Onboard mode will turn on your main signal lights. And then you have individual controls for accent lights. This will be for above the roof locker over the bed. Your ceiling lights in the bedroom, you turn them on and off. Or if you hold this in, you can just dim them down. And then you have reading lights and then the shower light you control from the bedroom as well. Above the bed, we have the intakes for the one of the two 15,000 BTU air conditionings with electric heat pumps built in. These are the intakes where the filters are. This is a ducted air conditioning system, so there's duct work throughout the trailer. You could spin them around, you could shut some off, and there's no baffle between the two. So if you only ran one of the air conditioners, it would cool all the way up front. If you put both of them on, on both zones, that would just give you more cooling capacity. Over here, we have a carbon monoxide detector. It's all plywood with laminate, so there's no particle board in any of the construction. And the cabinet doors are solid wood. Back over here where the shower is, there's another privacy curtain to shut down the hallway. And then overhead, there's a skylight in the bath area with a shade. Shower door has magnets on it to keep it shut when you're towing and a lock. And then this is all fiberglass here, two pieces, big overlap here, so you don't have to worry about water rolling under. There's a drain plug that you want to keep in when you're towing to keep the water in the P-trap so you don't get any tank odor in the trailer. This is a Kohler uh, diverter here. This is the shower head, has the paws built into it. And then you can adjust the holder up and down depending on where you want it. LED light inside, clothesline built in as well. And then a bathroom fan that you push up and there's also a fan in the toilet area. 
Moving up a little bit, we have the center wardrobe. In the wardrobe, there's a safe built in right below the floor here. It's bolted in and then it's uh, very secure. You got two layers of plywood here that it's bolted into. This happens to be the owner's bag. See the back of the wardrobe is cedar lined. These are the cushions that make up the dinette bed. They give you sheets. Below, we have an access panel to get to the converter charger. There's a battery charger. You might hear a fan running right now because it's charging. This has all the electrical breakers, your main breaker. This is a 50 amp service trailer. Uh, but you have uh, 15 amp and 20 amp breakers for different electrical components. And then there's also a 12 volt side of the trailer. That's your lights, your fans, your water pump, and the radio that runs on a 12 volt system. That's DC. And they have regular ATC automotive fuses. And if one of these fuses was to burn out, there'd be a red LED light next to it. And they're all the fuses labeled right here. On the other side, this is some of the system control. So this is uh, uh, one of the panels here that operates the C-Zone system. That's the smart pad touch pad for all the controls that we're gonna see in a little bit. And then it also has the Victron solar controller built in here and uh, some of your additional uh, back behind the scenes components. So this is just a service access point. Up top, the wardrobe rod has notches built into it to keep your clothes from swinging around. And then when you open and close the wardrobe, the light will come on. On this side of the hole, we'll take another look at the pantry from a different angle. Slide out pantry, adjustable shelves. Below the pantry, there's a drawer below here. And then up top, there's more storage. This could be a spice rack. The nine cubic foot automatic two-way refrigerator by Dometic has a very large freezer up top. These are little airing cards built in. So you could clip these on over the handles and keep the door partially open if you want to air it out when you're done using it so you don't get mold or mildew. And uh, in the bottom, there's one also. These shelves are removable and adjustable. There's a cutout here for larger, taller items. Some bins in the bottom. And then all the controls to turn it on and off or to switch from gas and electric. It is an automatic, so automatically search between uh, electricity or propane. If you have electricity, it will automatically switch to it. If you are not plugged into electricity, it will run on propane. You never want to leave the refrigerator on and the propane on when you're towing. So you just get it cool. It takes about seven hours to remove and absorb all the heat out of the refrigerator. Get it down to your uh, desired temperature and then shut it off once your food's inside and travel. And you got plenty of hours of driving time before you'd have to turn it back on. You could also max out the temperature one through five on this refrigerator. This right here, a lot of people ask about it. There's one in the back, one in the front. This is the temperature sensor for your air conditioning. So this is the sensing the room temperature in the trailer. Below the refrigerator is a large drawer. All the drawers are for service access are removable. There's two levers here you could squeeze on the bottom that will take the drawer completely out. And that will gain you access if you needed to get in here for service. And then when you line the drawer up, put your hand around the back, snap it in, lined up, and close it. This is a propane leak detector that is hardwired to the battery system of the trailer. This will detect that there's a gas leak on board and alert you. It's also very sensitive. Sometimes pets will uh, trigger it and some cleaning agents might trigger it. Under the dinette, there's a drawer here, a little squeeze lever, and you can store a lot of bedding underneath there. Dyna has a, a premium foam inside of it, an inner spring, so it's more like a back seat of a car instead of a plywood bench with cushions on it. Large table here. If the table's too high for you, you could adjust the height up in this cabinet here to get the height that you need. And then this whole thing folds into a bed, so let's keep going down. You notice on the wall there's an electrical outlet there that runs off your 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Grab these extra cushions. They actually sewn in some grip here so when you put them in place they don't slide around which is uh, very smart. And then this makes into a, another bed 
And this bed size is 42 by 76. And you can remove these back pieces to gain that full length. And you can stuff these underneath if you don't need them there. There's two large windows next to the dinette with the same day night shades. Some reading lights above. This television, the Samsung TV, is on an articulating arm as well with a lock mechanism. There's an antenna booster on the wall here for your omnidirectional TV and radio antenna that's on the roof. You simply just turn that on when you want to listen to the stereo or television and shut it off when you're done so you don't drain the battery down. TV's plugged into the inverter circuit. So the inverter, 1000 watt pure sine wave, is good for televisions and laptops. It's not designed to run a microwave or a toaster or a hair dryer. So you got to be mindful of the wattage usage of the devices you want to run uh, if you're going to use them on the inverter outlet. <laughs> Up above, we have the controls for the C-Zone panel. I could uh, tell them uh, uh, the C-Zone I'm on board and I could control the heating and air conditioning from here. So I could turn on one of the air conditioners. I could change the mode on each one of these items. And if you swipe left to right, you could get to all different uh, systems. So this would be the bath, that would be the fantastic fan in the galley, climate control. I could see all the lighting. I could turn individual lights on from here if I wanted to. And I could see the exterior lights. Another screen, you can see how much fresh water. This is a 52 gallon fresh water tank. You can see I'm 18.7% full. Uh, gray waste, which is 35, and the black waste, which is the toilet waste, is 41 gallons. There, the, both those tanks are empty. You can also monitor your propane from here, your battery voltage. It knows that we're plugged into shore power right now. You could turn on and off the inverter from here. Uh, this has 12 volt heated tanks, so there's a uh, Heat, on, heat tape on the bottom of the tanks, which gives you a little bit higher threshold protection if you're doing cold weather camping. It gives you about a seven degree boost in temperature in a tank. So if you get an unexpected drop in temperature overnight, it gets below freezing, you can put that on to protect you. If you get day and night temperatures below freezing, you have to decide whether to winterize it or not. And then also on this wall here, there's controls for the Aldi 3020 AG. That's the heating system in the trailer. That also gives you domestic hot water. So you could go through and toggle through and change your water settings. Uh, when you're on, uh, when you want hot water, I put it on 2KW and turn the uh, gas element on. So it's gas electric. And then I could change my temperature in here as well. Up above here, I have the Fusion Stereo. When you press the button, it takes about 10, seconds to boot up and then you have control of the sound in the trailer. Uh, above that there's a Sony Blu-ray player with the USB input. There's a USB charge port here next to that over here on the shelf above you can put some additional components. Another roof locker here in the center. And then this is the second intake grate for the main air conditioner. And there's a skylight in the galley with a shade. And this is the fantastic fan that you could control from the C-Zone center control unit. In the galley, three burner cooktop here. Front is your high output. Has a glass top, which gives you more counter space. There's uh, the Victron Energy solar display here, so you can see uh, how your solar charging system is performing. There's a GFCI protect electrical outlet here. Cooktop ventilation. There is a louver on the exterior that you'll have to open. LED light above. Plenty of storage above the galley. And the hardware is pretty cool. This is the Blum hardware. Uh, you can adjust how fast it opens, how much tension's on it, and uh, you can square out the door if it gets out of square. Uh, below there's a gas oven. I love the gas oven. I use mine all the time in my Airstream. So I, I suggest getting the standard way, which would have the convection microwave and the gas oven. But if you're not gonna use the gas oven, you have the option to have drawers here instead. This flips it down. This is boxed in over the wheel well. Large drawer here below. This is cut out to allow airflow because the radiant heat comes behind the countertop here. It's gapped from the wall to allow that heat to come out. Ocean air roller shade behind the kitchen galley sink. Below 
the sink, there's a trash pail that's routed in here so it doesn't move around when you're driving. There's a drawer here below. Another drawer, another drawer. And sometimes you'll see like behind the scenes things. So the tank monitoring we saw up here, but the actual control for it is in this cabinet. So it still has your standard RV components behind the scenes, but then they all tie into the C zone. And then this is carpeted here, which allows you to store your sink covers in this area, nice and tight so they don't move around when you're driving. Back to the sink, this is an LK sink. Uh, plenty of room. For, you could wash some pretty uh, big pans in here. I'm going to pull out faucet here above. And then the countertop has a leaf extension built in that you can flip up and give you more room. And then you just put the little ends here and that flips it down. And then you notice by the entry door there's a big grab handle here. There's some hooks to hang some items. Behind the leaf extension there's a doorbell. So there's a little doorbell here. Finger on it. You can turn on and off the main battery disconnect from here. And then you have all the similar controls that you have on that panel here uh, that allows you to also operate the awning from here and change your ceiling lights in your main area. GFCI protects the electrical outlet there. That radiator coolant line for hydronic heat runs right through this threshold. You got a uh, fire extinguisher here by the door. This is an extension of the radiator. These uh, armrests of the sofa have storage and it comes with these uh, zip D chairs. Really nice uh, zip D chairs. They have some umbrella fabric on them. They're a little springy, so when you sit on them, they're pretty comfortable. And then when you're done using them, you put them in here. It gives you a total of two that come with this trailer. In the, the seat here, we have the power foot pedestal. I'll try it on this side. Sit down. It doesn't really recline, but it does slide forward, which will allow you to lay back a little bit. And then you can adjust your angle right here. And then there's a USB charge port built right into the middle. This middle area here, this flips down and you can put your drinks here. If you want some privacy, you can close the big front shade. A lot of people ask about this thing here, sticking up. There's a bleeder valve for the hydronic system. There are some controls here for lighting. Another outlet on this side, one on that side. So I give you plenty of electrical outlets. Vista view window up top here, smoke detector. This is the cabinet accent light that you can turn on and off separately. Large space up top here. The standard wireless backup camera. We call it a driving camera because you leave it on the whole time when you're driving. This monitor plugs into your 12 volt socket in your vehicle. You turn your headlights or parking lights on that will power the camera. And I would leave it on the whole time when you're towing. On this side, this is the smart control technology. You can scan this and download the app on your phone. And that will give you access to not only set up the internet, but also to control all your C-Zone items off your cell phone. And then you can turn on and off. There's a GPS locator built into the trailer. So if you're out hiking and you want to find your way back to the campground, as long as you have internet signal, you can locate this Airstream on a map. I think it's pretty cool. Some people use it as a theft prevention. So if it, if it did get stolen, you could track it on your phone. It's not a live feed. It does update every half hour or so. And it'll ping it wherever you are. But if someone didn't want that on, they could shut that off back here. Speaker box built in. So there's four speakers and a subwoofer in this trailer. In this dinette booth here, these pop off. And this gives you access to the bypass. These three are for the bypass for winterization and then a low point drain. And all the way back there by the circulator pump, there's another low point drain. There's gonna be more when we go outside. Let's head out there. This trailer is 31 foot, three inches. That's from the center of the ball to the back bumper. And it's nine foot, nine and a half inches tall. That's the top of the air conditioning units. And it's eight foot, five and a half inches wide. The interior height with the air conditioner is six foot seven and a half inches. That's your headroom inside. The gross weight, that's the maximum weight this trailer can weigh, is 10,000 pounds. The dry weight is 77.88, giving you a net carrying capacity of 2,212 pounds. That's, you can add water, you could add cargo, 
additional options and features at, at that amount uh, just don't exceed the 10,000 mark. And the hitch weight, that's the hitch weight with full tanks of propane and batteries is 886 pounds. One of my favorite parts is the entry door. Look at this beautiful lit up uh, grab handle here by the door. Extrude aluminum frame structure for the entry door. Very solid, very secure. There's grip tape here in the bottom so you don't slip on the way out. It's angled so if water got behind the door it would still run out. The aluminum entry step flips up. It's completely flush with the body. The whole underbelly is completely wrapped and enclosed in aluminum. You have flex foil insulation below the composite flooring here and uh, it gives you a very high threshold protection for cold weather camping. To get the step out, push, flip, and down. Belt line uh, protection up top here, rub rail protection in the middle. This is a certified green. The Airstream got the Emerald rating. This is your cargo carrying capacity sticker here in the door if you needed to check and reference that. Screen door guards here, all TIG welded. Screen door detaches from the main door. It's on stainless steel hinges here. Locks in place, this fills up the gap. The door has the same equal bat insulation that surrounds the trailer inside the entry door. There's a latch here to keep the door from flowing around on a windy day. Deadbolt lock here, entry door lock, window in the door with privacy so you can't see inside. Shuts like a bank vault. Beautiful hinges here, all aluminum hinges. LED light above the door with an aluminum housing. LED lit light strip underneath the power awning, power awning standard. Sombrella material, same thing that we saw on the Zip D chairs. This is a stainless steel compartment here. Lock for the power stabilizer jacks. So I can extend those down. And that will keep the trailer from rocking around when you're walking around inside. And then when you're done, you just bring them right back up. You gotta make sure you do this before you hook up the trailer and take off, because you'll bend them if you use your electric hitch jack when they're down. Outside GSI protected electrical outlet. In order to use any of the non-inverter outlets, the air conditioning and the microwave, you need to be plugged into shore power. Whether you're doing the full 50 amp or adapting it down to 30 amp or adapting the 30 amp down to a household electrical 20 amp outlet. Uh, with 50 amp, you can run both air conditioners at the same time. With 30 amp, you can run one or the other, and on 20 amp, you cannot run either of the air conditioners, but you can use the microwave and some small appliances. LED porch light here. There's the cooktop ventilation. This is an upgraded stainless steel. This accessory and this accessory here, you could buy through parts and upgrade a Flying Cloud or International or Globetrotter trailer with. There's little latches here that you can flip down to lock that in place. This has light truck tires. It's a heavier trailer, so they upgrade the tires to light truck. These are Michelin, and they're LT225-75 R16, so that's a 16-inch rim, and these have a high load rating at E. Check your lug nut torque before any time before you ever hook up and tow the trailer. Check your tire pressure before you hook up and tow the trailer every single time. Be mindful of that. Airstream thought it was so important I give you a TPMS system built into this trailer. So it comes with a monitor that goes inside your vehicle and you can monitor the temperature and the tire pressure of each one of your tires, including the spare tire. This has a Dexter axle, never lube hubs, never adjust brakes. You don't have to adjust the brakes, but you still have to clean them and inspect them. Be mindful of that. You don't have to repack the wheel bearings, but you do have to inspect them periodically. Over here in the underbelly, there's a compartment that you could put wheel chocks and blocks of wood in. Above the window here, there's an extruder aluminum gutter rail. Somewhere around the back of the trailer. You can see the stretch form panels here for these, the curvature, that signature look of the Airstream travel trailer. It's the same Alcoa coated aluminum sheet. It's just Airstream puts it on a stretch form machine to get that curvature. Wash, wax it, keep it away from road salt. You get bugs in the front, make sure you clean them off. Treat it like your car. You want to take care of it so it lasts you a long time. If you do, it will look like just like this for a very, very long time. Beautiful panoramic rear window. 
Upgraded taillight bezels when you go to the Classic, all LED in here, and it has reverse light. That's uh, exclusive to the Classic. Polished aluminum bumper with little protection caps on the end. Rear bumper storage with a mat built into it, and there's holes drilled in to allow water to drain out, because this is not a weatherproof compartment. This is gonna be for things that you throw on the ground to get dirty that you don't wanna put in your lockable and insulated weather sealed trunk. In this trunk, there's some tools to manually operate the stabilizer jacks, the power cord adapter that takes you from a four prong 50 amp all the way down to a three prong 30 amp that will adapt you if you're on a 30 amp campsite. The awning tool, this is gonna operate your, your window awnings. In here, there's a tool, a multi-tool, you can put sockets on the end and uh, use this to work on things in the trailer. This is the TPMS monitor that goes in your vehicle. Manual override for the electric hitch jack. Propane quick disconnect port so you can hook this up at the front of the trailer and use a low pressure compatible grill. So just be mindful of the grill's compatibility before you hook it up. If you have a high pressure grill, no problem. Just hook it up right to directly to one of your propane tanks. And then this floor slide, these panels slide, and there's a big belly in here that you can store a lot of items in. And there's even a lid here that separates the rest of the area. So there's a very good amount of storage. And when you get the twin bed, you get the same storage compartments. It's just not gonna be as deep. Place and plank bracket with light, beautiful classic. That's tra trademark medallion here on the back. The window is all safety glass and it's also tinted. The rear window awning, pull a little strap down, swing these arms all the way around, roll it up. You can't reach this, that's what that hook is for in here. This is all metal wrapped and protected. Up top there is the wireless backup camera portion. Again, you gotta turn on your parking lights and get that to work. Roof clearance lights, those are LED as well. Raised Airstream lettering up top. This side, there's, on both sides, there's reflectors here. So if you're parked on the side of the road and you don't have the trailer on, these will reflect and so will these to make you more visible. Another window on in here, same procedure. This is a storage compartment here, just like the other side for wheel chocks and blocks of wood. This is the big thick 50 amp power cord. On a very cold day, it might get a little stiff. Just bring it inside, put it in a warm area, and then you'll be able to ravel it up nice and tight here. This is where you empty the waste tanks. There's an LED light so you can see what you're doing at night. Take the cap off, snap on your waste hose, get that secure at the campground. And then it's best practice to always empty your main tank, which is your black tank, that's toilet waste, first. Pull the handles out, pull straight out, discharge the waste out. When that's done, close it, lock it, open up the gray, which is sink and shower water, soapy water. Pull that straight out, it cleans out your discharge pipe. Now, periodically, since this is just gravity drain, you might want to flush it out. So they build in a black tank flush labeled here. Make sure this is open first. So you want to empty the black tank and leave the handle open. Hook up a garden hose to this fitting. Inside there's a sprayer that gets the residual waste out of the tank and allows it to discharge through. If you use that after every single trip before you put in storage, you shouldn't have a trailer that smells. There's deodorizers you can put in the black tank as well, but we find that this is the most effective. Up above, there is a city water connection. This you'd hook up your special city water hose, not a garden hose. And then inside there's a water pressure regulator. It protects the pressure coming in the trailer. So if you get an unexpected spike in water pressure at a campground, you're not gonna have to worry about harming any of your plumbing inside. In the wheel well here, there's drip tubes for both air conditioners. So both air conditioners and a condensation will drip through these tubes. They'll drip right behind the tire there. Most RVs will run off the roof and run down, run down the side and it leaves lots of hard water stains on your trailer. Over here is the fresh water tank fill. So that's separate from the city water. So if you want to add water to your 52 gallon fresh water tank, take the cap off, stick the hose in, put the water on low. Air will escape here and you can fill the tank. And this is lockable so you don't have to worry about anybody tampering with your water. Below, in between the axles here, if you notice each axle has a shock absorber built into it. 
There's a drain here that allows you to drain down the tank. And there's some petcocks back there for a low pressure drain for winterization. The little point drain. In the refrigerator compartment, it's completely lined in aluminum and caulked. So it's weather tight, but it's not recommended to hose this area out or store things in here. Has a, a drip here for the tray inside the refrigerator for condensation, propane line coming in, 12 volt coming in, and there's an electrical outlet up top that's also GFCI protected. This also has screens built into it so bugs don't get inside here. Side window awning, just pulled down, roll up, and then there's a travel latch here that allows you to lock it down so when you're towing it doesn't come out. Power cord has a little metal door up top. Und twist this, twist and pull. And then on this side, this would be the 50 amp RV connection at a campground you plug into. And it'll let you know that you have the full 50 amp with the two lights on there. This is where you hook into park cable at a campground. And there's also a satellite connection. So if you get a portable satellite dish, you can plug that in and bring your receiver and wire it in the trailer. You might need an HDMI splitter to do that. Over here, we have the outside shower. So this has hot and cold water. Right now it's winterized, so there's a little pink antifreeze. This wand will hang up here, and that will allow you to rinse items off when you're outside the trailer, your pets, when you're at the beach, or anything that you need water for outside that you don't want to drag inside the trailer. There's all the discharge and fresh air intake for the heating system and the hot water system. There's a waste hose storage tube below that allows you to store up to 20 foot of waste hose. That's a collapsible waste hose. And there's some condensate drips here for your Aldi system. Up here it is the VIN plate with tire size, tire pressure recommendation, production date, a lot of important information on here. Stainless steel wrap protectors up front. This protects the front of the trailer from any debris that comes up on the road. The aluminum body would dent a lot easier. The stainless steel is more resilient. And it's on a hinge with three nuts you can remove so you can swing it out and clean leaves and debris out from behind. They leave a gap from the body that allows some deflection so if you hit something it won't dent the body behind. The center rock guard lifts all the way up. Let's open these tethers, spin the neural knob on both sides. And now you can open up your window from the inside. You can clean your glass. You take a Phillips head screwdriver, turn a quarter turn to both these connections. This will swing out and lift off so you can clean your glass as well. And these are meant to be gapped from the body as well. So unfortunately the leaves can get behind there, but it's not meant to be completely sealed so you don't have uh, condensation buildup in between these two layers. Up front here, we have the electric hitch jack. You can raise and lower the trailer. There's a light out here. This cap comes off if you needed to manually operate it using that tool in the trunk. You would have to remove your propane bottle cover to do so, but this would be for emergency purposes. Demco coupler, two and five sixteenth inch bowl. Colonial Airstream gives you a, a hitch lock that prevents the trailer from getting stolen. Safety chains here up front, trailer breakaway cable. Seven way power cord, your vehicle's gonna need electric brake controller built in. Uh, we recommend also having a 12 volt charge lead in place all through this and this will operate the electric brakes on the trailer this is the propane quick disconnect port i mentioned earlier take the little weather guard off open the gas valve up slide the collar back and snap in the propane and that will give you uh, usage of a little low pressure barbecue grill up top here Pull the tether, open the lid. This gives you access to your propane tanks. These are 40 pound cylinders or aluminum. They each have a gauge on that communicates with the gauge inside. And you could use the selector to select either bottle, one or the other. Or if you turn both bottles on, this will automatically switch over from left to right. This nut here comes unscrewed and that lifts the bottle cover off. So you could take these out and get them filled. Uh, it won't work if you try to fill them while they're in the trailer still. And make sure you have these tethers down when you're towing. Behind here, we have the two Group 27 series, 100 amp hour AGM batteries. 
They're 12 volt in parallel, giving you 200 amp hours total. Never want to run an AGM battery down below 50%, so be mindful of that. You have about 100 amp hours usable. But your battery cables uh, have to be inspected periodically for corrosion. Make sure they're tight. And there's uh, some block fuses, fuses built into them as well. This is lockable. Colonial Ocean gives you a lock. On this side, there's, uh, there's standard 270 watts of solar on the roof. But if you wanted to add more solar, you could put an external panel that has its own controller built into it right into the ZAMP quick disconnect port. And if the batteries get below 80% and you have that plugged in in addition to the roof solar, that panel will allow it to charge the batteries. Next to that, we have access to get to the spare tire. Pull this pin straight out. Slide this one across and the tire drops down. Again, you wanna check your tire pressure, inspect your tire periodically, even your spare. Bring it up, make sure it's secure. Hope you enjoyed the tour. This Airstream is available at Colonial Airstream on display at our dealership, so you can come and visit us, take a tour of it, and then place an order. My name is Patrick Botticelli, Colonial Airstream, Millstone Township, New Jersey. Number here is 800-265-9019. Our website is colonialairstream.com. I hope to hear from you soon.